Hey guys, my name's Ken, and welcome to my series all about whippersnippers or line trimmers, depending on what you call them, depending on which country you come from. But basically, we're talking about these things. I'm going to cover everything from choosing them to using them. Oh. I'm sorry, that, that's really sad. I was proud of it when I first thought of that. Now, firstly, before we start, I have to talk to you about safety equipment. People don't use it. It's crazy. I see people on the weekend all the time. No glasses, no ear protection, no hat in summer. That's insane. The amount of times I get hit in the face from rocks with a whip snipper at work is crazy. It happens all day. Now, I'm kind of used to it, although it does hurt if you get hit on the lip or the tip of the nose. It's always quite painful. But you must wear safety equipment. You can blind yourself like that. Wouldn't take much. Take an eye out. Now, I've hit a friend with a rock while I was at work. I thought it was funny. He didn't. Anyway, wear some safety equipment. Let's start with some glasses. These are not really regulation glasses, and they're not the ones I wear, but they're all I could find for the video. You need smash proof glasses. If you wear glass glasses, then you're gonna have problems when it hits your eyes. My dad used to wear glass glasses. Crazy. Anyway, the next bit of equipment you're gonna need is earmuffs. It hurts your ears. The amount of times I've come home from work and my ears are just ringing, even with wearing earmuffs. It gets to you after a while. The, the problem I used to have was I'd wear a floppy hat and it would come over here and then I'd just put my earmuffs above it. It's not sealing properly. So what you're really doing is amplifying the noise inside. It might not sound as loud, but it hurts. Also, don't wear earbuds inside your earmuffs. Once again, you're amplifying the sound and keeping it in there. So I'm not really sure how the microphone, like how the radio head pieces are. Uh, whether they're any good or not, but I know when I was at TAFE or at Technical College uh, we were told not to wear noise devices in our ears while we're wearing earmuffs. It's bad for you. So like I said, this video is going to be all about choosing a whippersnapper, not about using one. My next video will be about using one and the video after that should be about just a little more, more advanced tips and things like that, just things I do on the job to make life easier for myself. You can use them at home, probably not as necessary, but there's some nice tips in there. Now, obviously I don't own every type of whippersnipper under the sun. I've only got the ones that I use for work. So I don't have electric, I don't have battery, and I don't have a bent shaft whippersnipper. I always use straight shaft. Uh, that's what I was taught by my dad, and that's what I've used ever since I started my business 12 years ago. Uh, my brother-in-law can use a bent shaft, but I'm not so good at it. So let's start with what I have got, and that is going to be a straight shaft whippersnipper. Now, a bent shaft whippersnipper goes like that. I'm pretty sure the purpose of a bent shaft whippersnipper is so you don't have to lean forward all the time when you're using it. Now I'm used to using the straight shaft so it doesn't bother me so much. But I can't do all the edges in that with a bent shaft, it just doesn't feel right to me. Now the good thing about a straight shaft whippersnipper is it's very versatile. So a lot of the time when you're on the job, you might have to go under trees, or you might have to reach or do a big large area because it's wet, or your mowers just can't get there. So this one is quite good for that. You can move around a lot more, and you can change positions up quite quickly. You can use it in all different ways. It's a great machine, it's probably best for professionals because no job is the same. So you're always going to different jobs and things are always different. You really need a versatile machine to be able to get through all that work. I'll just step back a bit here so you can see the machine a bit better. So that's your straight shaft. I'll get more into the engines and things later on in the video. So for now, Let's move on to the multi-tool 
is the petrol multi-tool. So at the moment I've got the hedging machine attachment on. This bad boy. Uh, and it comes also with a whipper snipper attachment. You just plug that in, take the hedging machine off, plug the whip snipper attachment in. The problem I've had with these machines, and I'm not saying it's this brand or anything like that, it might be all of them, this is the only one I've ever owned. Uh, the problem I had, the shaft. So I use my machines every day, obviously, and then when I go to change them over, there's two shafts that connect, like a male and a female. And after time, they get stuck together because I use them so often. And when I change them over, they start pulling out. And there's a whole bunch of spaces in here, but they've all moved. So now, when I turn it on, basically that machine is almost useless because all the shafts have moved and they just grind. They come out of their sockets and they don't hold in there properly. Now, I use my machines a lot, so I'm not knocking these multi-tools. They are very handy. They save a lot of space in your ute because you're not dragging around all different machines. You've just got to have the heads. Uh, but they're not really working for me. I want to keep it just for the hedging attachment because it's longer than the hedging machine I have. And it's quite nice to use. I'm used to using a whipper snipper all day. So using that machine is quite nice. Uh, but I think it's broken now and I can't use it on the job, which is a bit painful for me. The other problem I have, and once again, I don't know if it's the brand or not. I'm not saying it's the brand. But these little attachments here, Sorry, I'm looking at the camera, not at the lens, I apologise. Uh, this attachment here, this is where it clicks in and out. They wear, because I'm constantly changing it. And I'm constantly replacing these bits, bits of the shaft, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it just became annoying. So now I just use a dedicated whipper snipper. But if you're a homeowner, these are quite expensive. But they're definitely worth it. They're good quality. You probably won't have to replace them. And you probably won't have the issues that I have because you're not using them as often. So the attachments that you can get for those machines are great. You can get pole saws, you can get extensions for it, you can get hedging machines, you can get edging machines, you can get the line trimmer or whippersnipper attachment. Um, you can get heaps of stuff for them. So they are definitely worth it. I think you can get a blower for it as well. It goes on the end. Um, but for me, it's not something I'm going to have in my ute anymore because they just, it, it doesn't last the way I would like a normal whip snipper to last. And I'm not talking about the quality, I'm just talking about all the taking it off, putting it back together, things like that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about that I actually own is an edging machine. I don't use it at work unless I really have to because it uh, takes up more room in the ute that I don't want to use up. It's just easier for me with a whip snipper. Plus, the majority of my jobs, in fact, pretty much all of my jobs are regular jobs, so I don't have to cut edges out all that often. It's just uh, clearing the channel of my, of my edges, and uh, that's all I need to do. But here's an hedging machine, edging machine. Okay, now we've all seen these. This one's an Atom. It's only the domestic version, the green one. Pretty sure the red one is a commercial version. Now they have blades. The blades need sharpening. You know, I'm struggling to get a good shot here. There you go. So these are good if you have a job that you've just started and it's got overgrown edges and you want to get some cut, cut right into it. They're not the be all and end all. You still have to follow that up with a whipper snipper and try and dig it all out, but it certainly helps. These would also be good on big jobs, I think. If you've got to hold a whipper snipper the whole time, it can be quite tolling. So if you're on a big job, say you're doing a caravan park or something with lots of edges in it, uh, I've seen guys using them while I've been on holidays and uh, they look quite, quite good. But I use a whipper snipper all the time because it's just easier for me. It's quicker, I'm quite fast on it now, um, and it's lighter. Plus, it has problems when I go to start it. I don't use it all that often, might be a big deal, big part of the reason why. Uh, but they're good, but they're not something I use every day. 
that's a petrol one, by the way. Another problem with using a dedicated hedging machine is that it's only good for one job. And you've got to carry that around all day in the back of your car. Now, if you're a homeowner and you're just using it at home, obviously that's not a problem because you're going to have space set out at home for it. But when you're on the job, you don't want to be carrying extra equipment if you don't need to. Unless, of course, you've got a big trailer and it's all set up to carry that stuff. The other problem with them is you've got to sharpen the blades all the time just to keep them cutting properly. And if used incorrectly, they can lead to very wide edges. Obviously not that wide, but wide edges. Uh, and they don't just grow back in. You've got to wait for some soil to fall back in there and get the edges back again. Also, you can't use them up against garden beds. Uh, if you're on a lawn, for instance, uh, and the, there's no hard surface, you can't just wheel them across the grass. Well, you can try, but it's not going to work too well. That's another downside. A lot of developments that I was doing a few years ago were putting sprinkler systems against the concrete. That's insane to me. They probably think it's easier because they don't have to dig it out or something, I don't know. But if you're edging it, then that's a bit of an issue. You've got to watch out for those sprinkler systems. An edging machine will chew them up pretty quickly, especially if it's got nice sharp blades on it. They do save a lot of energy though, and I'll talk a lot about energy when I do my videos because energy is important when you're doing lots of work. You've got to conserve your energy, especially if here in Australia, you get some really hot days of summer and it's hot for days on end. So you want to be saving as much energy as possible for putting it towards your work rather than trying to hold machines and things. So they do save you a bit of energy, which is nice. Okay, so that was all the different shapes of whippersnippers or edging machines that you can use. But now we're gonna talk about the different engine types. This is a petrol engine type. There's two different types of petrol engines, uh, apart from sizes, as in how powerful they are. But there's two different types. There's four stroke and there's two stroke. This is a four stroke Honda. So with a four stroke, you have oil separate from the fuel. It goes into there and your fuel goes into there. Oop, there. So you get your fuel tank and your oil separate. That's the main difference between them. Apart from the fact that four strokes are a lot quieter than two strokes, which is a really good thing when you're on the job early or you're staying back late. It never really affected me before until my kids went to school and I started to uh, be late at work or start early at work. And then neighbours, they don't like it. They start to whinge at you and if they, if you don't respond, then they'll go and complain to the people you're working for. Um, they won't always, because generally people who complain to you don't have the guts to go and talk to anyone else. But I can understand, I can understand why people get upset. But here in my suburb, we're allowed to start at seven, except on the weekends, and you can finish at eight at night. A lot of people don't know that and they get angry about it, but we can start early. So the four strokes good. Now, people think that because you've got to do an oil change on it, it's a big drama. The amount of oil you put in is tiny. So if I do it on the job, I can do it within about two minutes. You just undo it, tip it out, or even quicker than that, undo it, tip it out. Once it's warm, tip it out, and then put the oil back in. It's like that, it's, it's easy. That's what put me off it for a long time. There was a myth when they first came out that you couldn't hold them up in the air, or that you couldn't have them upside down. That's not true. I do notice it struggled for a split second when I flip it over, but it never affects the performance. Uh, so that's not true. They can work. I don't think that myth's around anymore anyway. But that's another reason I never got straight into uh, four strokes. Now, there's bigger engines than this. This is the smaller one of the sort of commercial slash high-end domestic. Uh, this is good enough for me. Uh, they're quite heavy, the four strokes, compared to the two strokes. They're probably, I'm just guessing here, they're probably about double the weight. So, I'm doing 12 to 13 lawns a day when I'm busy, and I don't want to be lugging around the biggest whippersnipper I can find for no good reason. Most of my jobs are easy, you don't need a lot of power. You're just uh, doing the same jobs all the time, so power isn't a high priority for me. Now the next engine is the one on my multi-tool 
and it's a two stroke. Heaps lighter than the four stroke, which is good. That's something I liked about it. This particular machine I really liked because the balance on it is great. And throw it around, it's awesome. And when the end is on, I change the end to a, a different end, I won't go into that. Uh, but it's just, it feels great. A lot lighter, easier to throw around, nice machine to use. Now with this one, you put the oil, you mix it in with your fuel, the two stroke. But overall the servicing is the same, pretty much. Uh, they're nice and light and they're easy to use. They do blow a bit of smoke and you're breathing in fumes all day. That's the downside to petrol. So if I could, I'd move to electric. Sorry, not electric, battery. Now, now I don't have any of the other types. So you've got electric, which is run from power cord. Nice and quiet. Don't have to use petrol. No fuel emissions. Uh, and uh, unlimited life, I guess, as far as running time goes, if you've got a cord long enough. But that's the downside. You've got the cord. So it's constantly following you around. I've never used one before, but I'd be worried about cutting the cord. Um, but I've never used one, so I can't really say that, I guess. Uh, and it would just annoy me. If, if I'm working, then I obviously can't carry a cord around with me and hope that there's a power cord, a power point somewhere that I can use. So that's not really an option for me as a professional. Uh, I've seen people use them. They must like them because they get used a bit. Uh, but it's not something I would do. Maybe you'd do it if you had a really small yard. Uh, but apart from that, I don't know a lot about them, so I can't talk any more about the electric side. But if you're conscious of the environment and things like that, uh, or you have a really small yard, they're quiet too, so that's another point, um, then there's something for you. The final one I want to talk about is battery powered. Now they've been around for a little bit, but the good ones, the commercial ones, are only new on the market. Uh, they've only been around for a few months. Uh, that I know of uh, and that's where I want to head with my machines. <clears throat> the downside to petrol is that you're choking on the fumes all day and after 12, year, 12 years of doing that uh, you don't notice it if you're just using it at home for a little bit or but I use the machine in the air a lot with the engine near my head and after a while my eyes burn and from the fumes and you're breathing it in all day it's not the best feeling in the world so plus my ears it's not good for them either. Now, I want to move to a uh, battery system, but the setup, the initial setup is going to be really expensive for me. Uh, if you're just at home and you're using a one of the cheaper brands, apparently the cheaper brands aren't too bad, but if you're using one, then uh, all you've got to do is have your charger, which comes with the machine anyway, and your battery, and away you go. It's great to charge it, use it on the weekend, no problem. But for me, I've got to use it all day, every day. So I'd need a few batteries at a few hundred dollars each. I would need not only a charger, but I'd have to set it up in my ute so that it would charge in my ute all day. Uh, so that uh, there's those costs on top of the extra batteries. Uh, you're looking at, you know, just to guess one and a half to two thousand dollars, I'd say, to be fully set up properly so that you didn't have to worry about it all day. Now there's a few different brands. I know um, the stills are good, I'm assuming. Uh, then you've got, I think, Husqvarna. Honda doesn't have any out yet, uh, but they I think they're gonna bring some out. Um, and Ego, Ego? Ego. They're the one that uh, my local store's pushing. They said the battery life's really good. Uh, so what happens with electric battery, I'll, with the batteries is that they get hot and when they get hot they lose life uh, but apparently with the ego it has a cooling system inside the battery so it doesn't get hot and therefore you don't lose life over time <clears throat> the bonuses of these machines is that they're quiet i picked one up and it feels just like a normal whippersnipper um, i was a bit worried about the weight ratio but it felt nice that was an ego that i picked up um, I haven't used one yet. I have to go in and uh, ask if I can use one. The, they're quiet. Once again, no emissions. 
very little servicing, if any. Uh, you don't have to do any tuning on them. Um, and you can use them, I'm assuming, from the start of the day to the end of the day and you're not gonna have com noise complaints. So they look like the way that I wanna go in the future. Once I'm busy and at work, um, we're quiet at the moment because it's winter. Okay, so there's two main types of cutter heads that you're gonna come across when you're looking at your whip snipper or line trimmer. Uh, the two main types are an alloy head and a bump head. Or there are, I think still does an automatic feed where it uh, registers how much you got and it just spits it out automatically. I did use that once, I didn't like it because it came out when I wasn't ready for it and that was an issue. I'm not sure if there was a problem with the head I used, it wasn't my machine. Uh, but I didn't like it too much. Now, you can get all different types of alloy heads. I don't have any on me at the moment. I used to use one when I first started. Uh, my dad taught me how to use a whipper snipper and he didn't like bump heads. So the alloy head uh, is good because it's quite thin and you can get really close to the grass and you can just slide along it nicely or you can uh, hold it above and get a nice angle and you're not being restricted by the bit at the bottom which bumps into the ground to feed out the whippersnipper cord. The downside to them is they're a single feed. So you feed one cord through and once you use that up, you gotta pull it out, feed it back in again. But you can get lots of variations. Some of them have a few bits of cord coming out uh, and I've never used all the crazy ones that are out there. They're, they're probably good for something, but I've never used them. So you can have a play around with them if you really want to. They can get quite expensive though. Uh, but uh, I've never seen a need for them. The other type, like I said, I don't have the alloy head on me. I probably have someone lying around somewhere. I might dig it up and chuck it on the end of the video. Uh, but the other type is a bump head. Now you've got all different types of brands that have different types of bump heads, but basically this is a Honda bump head. That pushes in and there's a spring in there. That's the piece that you feed your loads of cord on. They hold lots of cord, which is the good thing about them. Spring pushes down, releases the cord, it shoots out the sides, and away you go, you've always got cord there. Now the downside to one of those, oh, sorry about the visuals there, is that uh, this is quite worn, so it's okay, but sometimes that'll come right out and it can interfere. You see cords all the way up here. So you've got that much room between there and there with the cord. Now, technically, when you're doing your edges, you should be good enough to put it on an angle, so you're only cutting with the tip of the cord anyway. You're not actually resting this on the lawn, but I rest it on the lawn. Um, unless it's a really short, like a cooch lawn, or something like that, you can't rest it on the lawn because it just bounces around everywhere like crazy. But if I'm doing buffalo, I'll just sit it on the top of the lawn. It helps me get my height right as well. They're great for big properties or if you're doing lots of lawns because you want to be saving as much time as possible. I don't want to be stopping and putting the cord through every single time I need to change it. And if you've got really dry weather and really coarse soil, it just eats away at it like that. Uh, if you're up against an abrasive surface like uh, some of these concrete uh, fake concrete brick things and they look like a uh, like a retaining wall uh, they'll smash your cord you you might even do a whole line before your cords going um, <clears throat> so they're good for big properties where you not where you need lots and lots of cord you're gonna eat through it you might be smashing it up on fences and things um, and if you're doing lots of edges they're really good too the thing is you've got to bump them all the time if you're cutting in old edges and you're trying to cut new edges in you've got to constantly bump them otherwise the the heat that's generated from it spinning in there will melt the cord onto the inside of the bump head and then you've got to pull it all apart and rip it out or get something in there and dig it out and then start all over again and that bit of the cord that melted is weak so it'll snap like that straight away anyway so they're brilliant I use them my dad hated them but he didn't do a lot of lawns he did more gardening uh, I do lots of lawns so I use the bump head you Use more of the cord that's in there because with a feed through, you're missing the whole bit that feeds. So imagine that's the head, you've got the whole bit that feeds through there, you can't use that. You're only using the end bits. Whereas with a bump head, you're using it all up until the last maybe 
that much. It's a U shape when it's in there, maybe that much of cord. Um, so they're good in that way, but I do find that I'm a bit more reckless with my cord usage because I know there's more in there, I just bump away, bump away. But the amount of money that you make extra and through time that's saved, it, it pays for that anyway. So a roll of cord that I use is about 80 bucks. Um, and that's a big roll. I think I've got, there happens to be Christmas lights uh, wrapped around this at the moment. But that's the size of the roll. And that'll be full of green cord all the way down there. Once again, I probably should have this out ready for the video, but I don't. Um, so that's the, the cord that I would use and the bump head that I would use. So there's pros and cons for both those bump heads. In summary, alloy heads, good for precision work. You do do a nicer job with it and you force it your skills more, um, but you have to feed it through all the time. Uh, the bump heads, uh, you don't have, you don't use your skills as much, I guess. Um, but you get used to it anyway. You get used to whatever you're using, you'll get used to it. If you're using an alloy, so what I'll do with an alloy head or what I used to do was I'd do all the tops of the grass first, then I'd come along and I'd do all the cutting in edges, the, all the vertical edges. I'd do them last because you don't want to be doing the tops in one section, then cutting in the verticals. I got quite good with it eventually. Uh, after a while I could do a whole lawn with two bits of cord uh, quite easily. But when you're first starting out, you're going to be eating that cord up because you won't use it right. and so you finish one section, then you've got to change a bit of cord, go do the next section, change that bit of cord. But with a bump head, you don't worry so much because you just bump it out, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but with, but when you're first starting out, try and do all your tops first, then go through and do your verticals because you'll get more done uh, before you have to change your cord. So this little section I've shot on a different day. I can't hide it because I've had a haircut since. So. Let's talk about cost. Now, how much do you want to be spending when you're getting a whip snipper? Obviously, the more you spend, the better the machine you're going to get. And this is especially important with your smaller machines like your whipper snipper and your blower. Now, if you go out and spend $100 on a small machine, then trust me, you're going to be throwing it away pretty quickly. It's not worth spending small amounts of money on these machines. Now a good machine will cost you between 450 to say six or seven hundred dollars if you want a multi-tool. Anything above that is going to be an excellent machine. The bigger Hondas, the bigger Husqvarna's, uh, the commercial machines. So if you're spending money thousand dollars and over then you're getting a great machine. But the majority of homeowners don't need to do that. You can get a nice whipper snipper from between $450 and $600 or $700. Multi-tools start at about $700. Well, at least the Husqvarna that I own was about $700. And then you've got to buy the extra attachments on top of that. So the multi-tool was just the whipper snipper. Then I had to buy the hedging head and that was about $400. But like I said earlier in the video, they're worth the money. You really do get what you pay for. And if you buy a cheaper machine, you're not going to be happy with it. I've got plenty of friends whose partners have bought them cheaper machines, trying to be nice, getting them for them for their birthdays. And really, all they're doing is causing them problems. So go out and spend some decent money on the smaller machines especially. If I was going to go cheap, I'd go a bit cheaper on a mower. I wouldn't go cheaper on a mower because I need the expensive ones, but if I had to give advice, that's what I would say. Thanks guys, see you in the next video. And don't forget if you liked it, like it, and if you want to subscribe to my channel, it's going to be growing, I'm going to be doing more content, uh, then subscribe. I'll be fixing up the, the page, the page looks a bit rubbish at the moment, but over time I'm going to get it looking pretty nice hopefully. Alright, thanks guys.